So in the last lectures we have seen um, some elements of set theory and logic and we have also seen what are functions and today we'll, we are going to talk about finite and infinite sets. So of course uh, intuitively it is clear what is a finite set. We deal with finite sets all the time in real life but we want to uh, provide a mathematical definition for a finite set and uh, this will help us define what are infinite sets as well okay so let us begin with finite sets definition of a finite set so a set a is called finite if it is empty if it is the empty set or if there exists exists a bijective function uh, from f from a to this set 1 2 3 up to n for some natural number n okay so uh, we will denote we will denote the set of natural numbers numbers as as this script n and so we can write here and is a set as an element of the set of natural numbers so this is uh, a definition uh, but in in mathematics whenever you see a definition you have to check that this definition is unambiguous so check that any definition uh, must be unambiguous so what does it mean unambiguous mean it means that uh, it cannot have two meanings at once okay it cannot have two meanings at the same time so let us check that our definition that we gave for finite sets is unambiguous or not. So uh, note that here we are choosing an, a natural number n and we are claiming that a set is finite if uh, either it is empty or there exists a bijective function uh, from a to this set um, of natural numbers from 1 to n. Now uh, the problem here is that this is a problem is that the the number n the number n is not determined in un uniquely determined uniquely from the definition Uh, what I mean by this is that uh, just if you if you just take the definition uh, uh, if one just takes in the definition then it is not clear if there is there exists an m a natural number m which is different from n says that uh, there is a bijection there is a bijection f uh, f1 let's say from a to 1 2 up to m so 
we have seen that a, a is finite if there is ex if there exists a bijection if it is non-empty to some uh, set 1 to up to n but we are also saying that uh, f1 is a bijection from 1 to up to m for m not equal to n okay so uh, of course this is absurd because uh, if you count a set it cannot uh, yield two different numbers at the same time right so bijection here is just counting the number of elements of the set and um, it is just saying that uh, having these two bijections says that a has n elements but also that a has m elements for m not equal to n okay so this is uh, absurd but uh, we need to prove it okay so we will prove this statement uh, which is intuitively clear but requires a mathematical proof so we begin with the following lemma and what is a lemma a lemma is a, a logical statement uh, or a logical proposition which has a mathematical proof so what is the statement here so the statement says that if n n is a natural number and a is a set and we will assume that a is a non-empty set and we take an element uh, a naught in a because a is non-empty we can choose uh, an element a such an element a0 or a naught from a and now uh, it, the statement says that then there exists a bijection there exists a bijection f from a to the set of uh, numbers from natural numbers from 1 to n plus 1 so note the n plus 1 here if and only if so what is if and only if uh, this is just another way of saying that there is a logical equivalence between two uh, logical statements so this is just uh, the logical equivalence that we um, denoted as this uh, implication before and uh, if and only if means that there are um, there is a logical equivalence between two statements so which are the two statements here so the first statement which i denote p is this is the statement that there exists a bijection f between a and the set of numbers from 1 to up to n plus 1 and the second statement uh, which is after the if and only if which i denote by q says that there is a bijection g g from the set a minus a naught so we uh, delete the point a naught that we chose before from the set a and now there is a bijection g from a minus a naught to the set 1 2 up to n so note that here the set above for f is ends at n plus 1 but the set for g ends at n so um so the if and only if statement is a logical equivalence between p and q so we will see a proof of this lemma and so we will have two logical implications to show because it is a, a logical equivalence so we will have to show that p implies q and q implies p so first uh, let us start with the easy uh, proof uh, easy direction which is q implies p so uh, remember that your q was this statement that g from a minus a naught to 1 to up to n is a bijection and you have to show that there is a bijection f from a to 1 to up to n plus 1 so we need to show that there is a bijection f from a to 1 to up to n plus 1 this is very easy because we can define f so define 
f uh, from a to 1 2 up to n plus 1 as the following in the following way so fx equals um, x if x is in a minus a naught so this is uh, not x sorry this is g of x if x is in a minus a naught and fx equals n plus 1 if x equals uh, a a naught okay so this is the formula for the bijection that we want so check that f is a bijection so we have to show that uh, f is both injective and surjective and i leave this as an exercise for you to complete and so this proves that q implies p so now the other direction p implies q so suppose that f uh, from a to 1 to up to n plus 1 is a bijection and then we have to show that there is a bijection bijection g from a minus a naught to 1 to up to n this is also quite easy so let's uh, see what happens uh, for the point a naught so if f a naught equals n plus 1 so uh, the value that f takes on a naught is exactly n plus 1 then you one can define g to be f restricted to the set a minus a naught so remember that we have defined the restriction of a function and so um, if f a naught takes this value n plus 1 then g is is a well defined uh, function from a minus a naught to 1 to up to n which is given by uh, the restriction of f to uh, a minus a naught because you are excluding the this uh, value n plus 1 so you are landing up in the rest of the set which is just 1 2 up to n and this is a bijection this is a bijection again i leave it to you as an exercise to check that g is a bijection but of course in in general this uh, condition may not hold this condition may not hold so if uh, f a naught is not equal to n plus 1 say uh, say suppose that it's not equal to n plus 1 but uh, f a naught is equal to m okay uh, which is different from n plus 1 and now uh, because f is a bijection since f is a bijection there is a, an element a1 in a um, a minus a naught such that um, f of a1 is equal to n plus 1 so of course a naught uh, on a naught f a naught is not equal to n plus 1 so there must exist another element uh, for which f a1 equals n plus 1 because it is a subjective function so now uh, what we are going to do is we are going to define another bijection which swaps these two values uh, for a0 and a1 so define h from a minus 
uh, a2 1 2 up to n plus 1 which is given as follows so hx is equal to um, x or fx if x is not equal to a0 or a1 and hx equal to n plus 1 if x equal to a0 and hx equal to um, m uh, f a0 if x equal to a1 okay so remember that this was uh, f a1 was n plus 1 and f a0 is some other value but what we are doing is just interchanging the values of a0 and a1 for um, this new function h so here you had a and here you had uh, this set 1 2 up to n plus 1 and uh, for some a0 <coughs> this took some value uh, under f so this is f a0 and you had this value n plus 1 which had another element a1 here which maps to n plus 1 under f but with h for h we take uh, we uh, change the value of a0 that h takes it maps a0 to n plus 1 and a1 to f a1 f a0 so we interchange these these two values and we keep the rest of the values the same as as the function f and check that check again that h is a bijection and it satisfies h a0 equals n plus 1 and now we are in the previous situation uh, where we had a bijection f uh, which took the value uh, n plus 1 at a0 and then we can just take the restriction of this function to define g so now take g to be the restriction of h to this space uh, to this subset a minus a0 and this is again a bijection is a bijection uh, between a minus a0 and the set 1 2 up to n so this completes our the proof of our, our lemma and we'll see that this lemma is useful to show that um, one can have the um, definition for finite set becomes unambiguous with these with this lemma